Hey YouTube, this is Ak with Achilles Financial and today we're going to be talking about STEM Inc. This is a brand new presentation. You can see it's labeled January 2022. It was presented today and it is now available on their website. I will post a link in the description down below. And we're going to walk through. This is a channel favorite and definitely a favorite of mine. And with a number of high growth companies, it has been absolutely blasted over the past few weeks. Uh, chiefly this one. What we're going to be looking at in this report, I've gone through it in preparation for this video. There's a number of really good things that I like to see, as well as a number of items that have me, I don't want to say worried, but there is some concerns about how some of the information is presented. That being said, the, continu the company continues to execute, and I think that the pros do outweigh the cons in this example. So without further ado, let's get started. So the first thing is, as always, all of this is just statements from the presentations this is been or has been filed with the sec so it is factual information just have to remember that anything in a presentation especially an investor presentation is designed to look as good as possible so i'm going to skip over a number of these items right here that again is just talking about the the group but the main thing that i am going to be focusing on is the company itself as well as their recent acquisition which will close in this quarter is going to be also energy. So the first thing that I'll highlight is once again, it showcases the strong key three results from STEM. The chief one among that is going to be the high end of expectations from revenue with that nearly $40 million. The second thing that we'll talk about is again, you can see that gross margin here. This is gap gross margin. So that means that this is the financial statement. I always like to use the gap numbers because that's kind of the actual or the factual ones as opposed to these adjusted numbers down below because those adjusted ones are not gap. They are not what are going to be basing for valuations and as such, we're not going to be necessarily as worried about them. The main things that I want to highlight though is these numbers are as of Q3 and then once again, I want to highlight that from a contracted backlog perspective, all of the revenue expected for 2022 is nearly closed so this was as of q3 during that time they had record revenue however the backlog actually increased during that same type or during that same time period so what we would expect is once again for that backlog to continue to increase and as the company revenue continues to increase we would expect that to decline a little bit that was not the case this time which means that again the demand is outpacing what they are executing on right now which is a great problem to have so that's what we'll be watching going forward is what number is produced here when they announce earnings expected around the second week of february so when we talk about recent developments let's talk about the purchase of also energy so the company itself is more of a software company than a hard storage energy company i would say that when it comes to total value prop this is almost a merger of equals versus a out and out acquisition they are very similar in terms of total size However, also energy has a stronger software presence, whereas STEM and their Athena platform has a stronger hardware presence. It does say that they have 60% gross margin. I'd like to see more associated with the actual company in terms of the financial statements because it says 11 million in adjusted EBITDA. However, if we go to the very bottom of this presentation, apologies for flying through that very quickly, you can see that their net income was actually negative 11 million. So we don't get to that adjusted EBITDA, which again is not gap compliant until after going through these adjustments that you see here. So what I'm going to be focused on is, hey, they are also losing money. Again, that's $11 million and STEM is losing money as well. Once again, apologies for flying through that presentation like that. But you can see that they have a lot of complementary items in terms of revenue, in terms of the optimization. And you can see that the two of them being combined is going to be beneficial for the overall value proposition, as well as it is going to be directly acquisitive or rather directly accretive to their overall revenue, which is definitely exciting. They do have 57 million in revenue on a trailing 12 months basis, as well as 23 million in annual recurring revenue. So this is something that a lot of the tech industry is 
following and is closely tracking in terms of valuation. The reason for that is because this $23 million is not or is a number that they will not have to go out and get again next year until renewal time. And generally speaking, when renewals occur, you have the capability to tack on a little bit of an upcharge, generally speaking, cost of living increase or inflation adjustment, which is normally two to three percent. Right now, I would not be surprised if this was seven percent over three years. So that's what we see right here associated with also energy and STEM. This is going to provide them a significant number of clients that they can tap into. Some of the important ones obviously on here are going to be UPS and Walmart on the behind the meter. So FTM, BTM, front of the meter and behind the meter. But Walmart and UPS obviously going to be big deals. You can see Facebook and Google here as well. The big one between the two of them is Amazon. So there's a lot of benefits here, and I think that it provides a lot of cross collateralization in terms of the open opportunity here. When we talk about the two companies together, this slide is probably the best to showcase this. You can see that they have in terms of total storage across the board, that they've got 1.4 gigawatts here and then 32.5 solar here so what this means is that they are working more so on the front end of the meter they are working with clients in terms of their solar creation and the energy platform there whereas the storage is the actual management of those batteries so you can see over the past 12 months you can see that we have 93 million dollars and 57 million so before this latest q4 which we'll talk about here momentarily but we're looking at a total revenue of about 150 million keep in mind that for the q4 numbers for just stem they were expecting to have 144 million dollars so if we're combining those two together this is assuming that stem hits their numbers going to be a 200 million dollar company which was in line with the expectations i laid out in my prior video right now combining these two together assuming the q4 gross profit is similar to what we've been seeing over the past three reporting quarters i would expect us to be about 40 million gross profit the question is are we going to be able to see any of this be adjusted into a positive way in terms of the adjusted EBITDA between the two. Uh, what I'd like to see, and I believe it's the current expectation we'll see below, is for the 2022 adjusted EBITDA, I'd be interested to see if that is now a positive number. Again, that's 2022, not the Q4 earnings, which will be coming out in another few weeks. So how did they buy this company? So this was not a inexpensive acquisition. They were able to raise $460 million, and they were able to leverage green convertible senior notes. So what is a convertible senior note? This is essentially the option to purchase STEM stock at a perceived price, and until that option is exercised or until 2028, where if they choose not to choose that option, they'll be paid, I believe it's $28.90 in cash or they can adopt it for the stock price at that point in time. However, each year they will be required to pay 50 basis points or 0.5% of that value of that 460 million. So despite the fact that $460 million is a lot of money and is somewhat on the high end in terms of purchasing also energy, in terms of the overall pricing that they paid for it, it's actually a very low way to raise money for this due to the fact of that 50 basis point interest rate that is very very low and that's due to the fact that there are certain tax incentives for those green convertible senior notes so in terms of how they did it despite the fact that i expect this will cause additional dilution in the overall share holders equity i expect that it's still going to be beneficial for the company because they didn't have to just straight issue shares which could have been a little bit more expensive of an opportunity and this gives them cash on hand to grow going forward so there is a significant amount to like about how they did this deal, and I'll be interested to see how it plays out over 2022. Another super exciting announcement that happened is they came out with a marketing agreement. This was actually released, I believe, on Tuesday of this week. That's Tuesday, January 4th, 2022. Uh, they are actually going to be working with a number of auto providers for charging, EV charging. And you can see that they are going to be tying themselves into that space. This is not something that they were originally going to be co-marketing with. However, they are strongly 
going to be trying to enter this space. And again, that's going to be essentially energy storage management for a number of these EV charging sites all over the United States. The success of this is really going to be dependent on how well they're able to tie in to a number of these institutions. I'm not super worried about this $4 billion five-year total addressable market because in my opinion, that's really a made up number. The question is if this was not originally built into their growth plan, is it going to be able to help them achieve growth that maybe they weren't originally projecting at this point in time? That'll be something that we'll have to develop or define expectations as they continue to reiterate forecasted guidance. So there has been a lot to like so far. I'm not going to be going through the company specifics itself just because this is a lot of information that we have reviewed on a number of videos here on the channel. One thing that I would highlight is this chart right here. These stem numbers that you see right here that show them in the lead, this is as of 930, 2021. You can see that down here below. I don't know if it's coming through in the video. But down here below, the STEM numbers are as of 9-30-2021, whereas all of these other numbers are coming from December 2020 of, yeah, December 2020. So nine months delayed. Not a huge fan of this because it is very deceptive in how they produce this chart. And I think that it's a little scummy. And so take that as you will, STEM people who prepare this. Uh, This is not appropriate, and I understand it is to please your investors, but I don't think that you'll be in trouble if you are in the top five. So it will definitely be okay. But wanted to highlight that if you're looking at that or sharing this information. So the last thing that I want to highlight, again, feel free to go and look at this information on your own, is the financial forecast. So the thing that we want to highlight here is the 2021 expected revenue. This is $147 million right here. And this is produced once again today, January 6th. So if they had expectations that they were not going to hit this number, then I feel like that would have been said any point in time in the past three months. And especially this would not be reiterated and put in front of investors after quarter end. So I'm very positive on the 2021 execution. I believe that they're going to throw a number out there, most likely in excess of 147 million. I would expect this to be around 150 million, which again is going to be crazy growth over what we saw in 2020. The other thing that I will continue to highlight is that contracted backlog. These are contracts that have been signed where they have agreed to already accept the services. This is not putting a reserve deposit down. This has been signed and it is already in place. They just have to go deliver on it. So that is super exciting, especially when you talk about what they expect to do in the future. So you can see in the supplemental information, it talks about some of the growth expectations, but here is some of the CNI customers that they expect to see and to utilize. So inclusive of all of this information is the expected global storage future. So the last thing that I wanna highlight is again going to be these financials. So you can see this information here with STEM. The three months ended in terms of the net income right here is they had very, very strong growth. This was entirely built out of the change and you can see below in the fair value of warrants. All in all, what I wanna be focusing on is this revenue number right here where you can see that they had $39.8 million in revenue. The expectation going forward is that number is going to be north of 60 million and they're going to continue to perform very, very well. So super excited about this. And then we've got the also energy numbers down here below. And you can see how that actually gets reconciled. But the main thing is that you can see the STEM reconciliation. So that's their net income. And then the also energy reconciliation down below. So there is a lot to like about STEM right now. The valuation is definitely getting punished because even with all of this excitement, they're still gonna be trading at north of 10X sales. They are a high growth company. One of the major concerns with high growth is how do you finance that growth, especially under higher interest rates. Keep in mind that by locking in this cash, as long as they don't do another capital raise, I'm really not worried because of the fact that they just raised cash for a very, very low cost basis of 0.5%. So very, very strong position. They're continuing to execute. They said this is what they're going to do. They went out and did it. There's not a lot of companies that can say that. So as long as that continues to perform at the same level, I will be very excited to see what they produce going into this calendar year. And as such, I'm going to continue to be a long-term investor. That being said, I'm by no means a financial advisor. I'm just some guy on YouTube. 
However, if you find this content helpful, please leave a like and subscribe. Appreciate it if you made it this far. Thanks. Talk to you later.